Hello mate, how you doing? I want to ask you quite a confronting question. Are you ready for it? Here it is. Regardless of how old you are, do you still feel like a bit of a child in a man's body? If I ask you that question and you react emotionally, either defensively, either with a sense of anger or with a sense of exposure, like I've just opened the floodgates a little bit and it's like, oh shit, is he talking to me? If that's the case, then sweet, continue to watch the rest of this video because this is directly for you. In this video, I'm going to give you five subtle signs that you have what we call Peter Pan syndrome. And I'm going to talk about what that is as well. I'm also going to talk about how Peter Pan syndrome originates, like where it comes from. But first of all, why should you listen to me? So I'm a men's coach. I'm a trained psychotherapeutic counsellor but I've also worked with men specifically over the past four years now on this exact problem. Not every man had this problem but I've worked with a lot of men in overcoming this kind of like psychological stunted development. Okay. Not only have I experienced it myself and overcome it, I also help other men overcome it as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit of faith that I'm not just talking out of my ass. So let's talk about what Peter Pan syndrome is. Peter Pan syndrome is this feeling that you are a man-child. Maybe other people have told you this. Maybe you've gone through a breakup where she told you you're a man-child or whatever. Maybe you've had this reflected to you. Or maybe just in your more private, honest moments, you actually just feel more like a kid than you'd usually like to admit. This is what Peter Pan syndrome is. How does it develop? There are three factors that I want to talk about today about why this develops. One, the father a healthy father, one of the roles of a healthy father is to initiate his son into adulthood. This is a conscious process where you prepare a boy for life, for chaos, for change, for death, for disappointment, and you awaken the boy. You awaken the boy to his own capability. The world is dangerous sometimes, scary, challenging, but a father reminds the son, his son, that you are capable of overcoming all of it. That's what a healthy father should do. But what did most of us get? Most of us got an absent father, either the father just fucked off and left the mum to raise you. You either had a dad who was there, but he was actually an alcoholic. You had a dad who was there, but he was passive, so he wasn't even really present. He just came home from work at five o'clock, vegged out in front of the TV and didn't pay attention to you. Or, If you're particularly unlucky, you had a father who criticised you, who judged you, who shamed you, who never let you enjoy yourself really, who never celebrated you, who never actually listened to you, regardless of what it is. We live in the age, I believe, of the absent father. He's either emotionally absent, physically absent. That's why a lot of men struggle to grow up because they've not been initiated yet. This actually brings me to point two about why this happens is to our more primitive ancestors they understood that rituals and rites of passage and initiations they understood that these things are very important one ritual was let's take this boy who's 14 we're going to put him through a a challenging ordeal whether that's send him off into the woods alone for seven days to survive in the in the peruvian rainforest they put gloves full of bullet ants to bite him <laughs> so that he has to in, like face pain for a, a day or two but whatever it is societies would have a way of helping men grow up through a, an experience an initiation we don't have that anymore okay and, th- and this is what, one of the reasons why a lot of men struggle to grow up the third reason we're all in apartments playing video games, we're all on Discord, talking to people in extremely unsatisfying ways. We're not getting this live feedback on how we are showing up in the world. We're not getting that feedback from other men. Your tribe of other men exist so that they can show you who you are in a loving way, in a way that won't get you to freak out or be defensive or whatever. When another man cares about you, really cares about you and has the balls to look at you and say, look man, you can do better than this. You can do better. Have you ever been told that by another man before? Some men are craving it. Some men are dying to be told the truth from another man. Those are the three reasons why Peter Pan syndrome come up. There are many others that I've talked about in other videos on my channel, but those are the three I want to talk about today. Now let's get into the reason why you clicked on this video. To diagnose yourself, okay? 
five hidden signs, five very subtle signs that you have Peter Pan syndrome. These signs directly come from my own life and the lives of the clients that I've worked with over the past four years. Take a sip of water because I've got dry mouth. I'm taking painkillers and they just dry my mouth out. Sign number one. This sign was brought to my attention by a psychoanalyst called Marie-Louise von Franz. She wrote a book called The Problem of the Pure Eternus. This is a book about this exact problem. Pure Eternus is Latin for eternal boy. She was a psychologist back in the 40s, 30s maybe, it was like quite, quite a long time ago, when she discovered in her practice that there was just a rising trend where men would show up psychologically infantile. And she also noticed a very common trait across all of them. They were stuck in their head all the time. They were intellectualizing. Some of them were very intelligent. They could break things down into concepts and systems and they could live in the realm of the intellect. Why? To escape their feelings, to escape the present moment, to escape the fear that drives them because they were never initiated. Because when you've never been initiated, that means that you've never actually got in contact with your own power and capability. And what happens when you've not never got in touch with your own power? You're anxious, you're afraid, you have a, a pervasive fear of life. And people with Peter Pan syndrome, they escape it by emotionally disconnecting from the moment, from their bodies, getting stuck in here and feeling generally emotionally numb. Sign number two. When I was really struggling with Peter Pan syndrome, I had a very strange addiction. My addiction was to role-playing games on PC or PS3, whatever. I used to play Dragon Age Origins. I used to play Fallout New Vegas. I'd play all these games where I could basically be a different character altogether. This is because to deal with the, the, the fear of life that, Peter pa that, that lies at the root of Peter Pan syndrome, I was retreating into fantasy worlds. I loved to just be in a completely different alternate dimension. And role-playing games would allow me to kind of play out this, this desire in me to actually be a hero, right, in this life. But I, I could play it out safely, avoid my fears, avoid the real challenge by just playing it out online instead. Sign number two is all about preferring to live in a fantasy universe than to stay rooted and grounded in this life, in this present moment, in your life. A lot of men who have this problem do the same thing. They're in fantasy land and they're doing it to avoid, avoid reality altogether. Because avoidance is a very common trend of this, by the way, but I've spoken about that in another video. Overcoming Peter Pan syndrome requires that you do some deep inner work. It also requires that you go on a deep journey. I created a free 31-day fillable PDF that gives you a single high-impact deep writing prompt every single day. Do this, commit to this for 31 days. Not only will you prove to yourself that you can actually commit to something and see it through for a full month, you will also build the solid self-awareness and be a completely different person at the end of the journey than you were at the start. Click the link in the pinned comment below, download that guide, and get to work. Enjoy the rest of the video, mate. Sign number three. Aaron, one of my ex-clients, came to me because he had a very peculiar, very persistent and annoying problem. He noticed that he had the tendency to create absolutely brilliant plans. He made, he could basically strategize with everyone else about their plans. He could strategize about the next five years of his life and then tell everyone about it. But the problem was, when he came to me, he says, I make plans, but I have no follow through. I can't do anything. I, I make a plan, and then all of a sudden, in th uh, two weeks pass, and I forgot all about my plan. I forget that I forget. So it's like he forgets his plans, but then he forgets that he ever even made the plans in the first place. And he explained to me that usually his friends would remind him like, hey, I thought you were gonna start that business. What's happening with that? And he'd be like, oh shit, yeah. I, thought, I forgot about that. Constant making plans, no follow through, forgetting stuff, being basically stuck spinning your wheels, that is a very common trait of Peter Pan syndrome. Sign number four, it's one that I've experienced and it's a very quick one actually. You struggle to maintain a sense of focus on stuff. Again, if you're afraid of life deep down, you're afraid of change and all the rest of it, all that life 
brings, then you're not going to focus for very long. Because when you focus, you go deep. And when you go deep, you connect with life, okay? Which also means connecting with your own fears in a, in a much deeper way. You suspect that you might actually have ADHD or mild autism. And sign number five, look back over the past five years of your life. Answer me truthfully, has it changed much? Have you lived five years or have you lived the same year five times? Men with Peter Pan syndrome, they are so afraid of life, of rejection, of shame, of embarrassment, of failure. They're driven by their fears to such a degree that they construct these castles around themselves that eventually become a prison. Because when they construct this castle, it's basically a bunch of defense mechanisms and habits that are designed to make life stay the same all the time, they actually end up digging their own grave because life stops being life. Life just becomes this rehearsed, conditioned pattern of responses to stuff. A lot of men who come to me with this problem say they want to, be fu they want to feel fully alive and it's because their defense mechanisms have created a prison in their life for the past five years. Life never changing, life staying the same, things being stagnant, lacking motivation, no momentum. This is characteristic of Peter Pan syndrome and psychological immaturity. If this video shed a little bit of light on your situation, then go a little further. Click this video next, watch this video, go a little bit deeper into this problem and this video is going to give you some potential solutions to this problem that you can explore. Thank you for watching, man. I appreciate you, as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.